Hello YouTube, this is Les. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show a little Stirling engine that I've recently built. Uh, I prepared a general layout drawing like this. I didn't make drawings of all the detailed parts. Kind of uh, just built the, the engine kind of on the fly. The engine has a Pyrex uh, test tube for the hot end with uh, an aluminum displacer. The displacer is drilled out to make it as light as possible. Uh, the cooling end is air-cooled and is made from a piece of one-inch brass rod the power piston is a very small quarter inch uh, piston and it has a, a 3 8 inch stroke, the same as the stroke of the displacer. The engine uh, runs on denatured alcohol. Um, I believe this configuration is referred to as a bell crank where the power piston uh, operates through a rocker arm and uh, the same crankshaft can can handle both the power piston and the displacer. I'll uh, put some fuel in the engine and I'll show you how it runs. Sterling engines are very um, easy to run. You have to oil a few parts now and then, but basically uh, you just have to light the light the wick and uh, wait for them to warm up. It's not like a steam engine where you're you're adding water and then you have to uh, drain the boiler afterwards. Uh, it's not like a, an IC engine, um, which is not, does not produce a pleasant odor when it's running and therefore not so much fun, fun to run indoors. But a Stirling engine is very simple and, and easy to run. That should be enough. The denatured alcohol, which is mostly methanol, burns very clean so it's kind of hard to see the flame at times. The power piston right here looks a little funny because I originally had um, a much larger piston and I discovered that the um, 
the volume of the uh, expanding uh, air did not have enough to drive this piston far enough. There was there just wasn't a large enough volume of air, so I uh, inserted a smaller cylinder. In this case, it's a quarter inch cylinder and piston, and that proved to be just about the the right size. So the general proportions that seem to work pretty good uh, would be for the power piston to be about one half the diameter of the uh, displacer cylinder. That's assuming they both have the same length stroke. The test tube is held inside the brass cylinder. Uh, it, it slides in a little distance. Um, I forget about a quarter of an inch or so. And then this retainer right here has a Vitron O-ring that kind of squeezes down on the on the test tube and secures it into the brass the brass cylinder. And uh, it works real good. The test tube had to be shortened. Um, cut that off with a little diamond wheel. I got a very rough edge on it. Um, but it seems like it seems like it's okay. The first one I made started to develop a crack and the crack moved all along and eventually got towards the end. Never really failed, but uh, I had purchased a number of these test tubes for extras and so I I uh, made a new one <clears throat>